Hi guys, I'm Ariset. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Adebola Williams, who is one of Africa's most celebrated millennial business leaders, especially with his influence in the political space. Alongside his business partner, Trude Jidenwo, they've built successful businesses like Red Media Africa, The Future Awards, Y Niger, and Statecraft. Adebola is responsible for helping three African presidents get into office. In fact, the Ghanaian president, Nana Akofuado, has referred to him as the man with the golden touch. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Hi, Adevola. Hi, Ursa. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we'll just dive straight in. Lots of entrepreneurs, they have business ideas, but they struggle with monetization. Mm. And they also struggle with raising the money to be able to start you know, their businesses. But you have a very impressive resume with fantastic businesses that you've built. So I want you to walk us through how you started and how you went on to monetize those ideas. Interesting. Um... Disclaimer first, <laughs> I'm not the best person at the money show uh, because my, 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 my principles and the things that I've done, you know, over the years in building what we built, myself and my partner mm. today, um, have been quite different and not necessarily first focused on money, okay. uh, which again, you know, would be our own style. Uh, um, starting out can be tough, you know, mm. especially in a, in a place, you know, like a country where you have peculiar problems, you know, infrastructure, um, infrastructure you know, being the, being the bane. Um, but then for us, you know, I think it was always a thing about the mindset. Um, so, so the first thing we, we had to do was to identify clearly what is money for? Yeah. You know, it's for needs, it's for value, it's for resources. Can you find those resources and value without money? Perhaps. Mm. As at every stage of our business, at every stage of the ideas we've birthed into, mm. you know, businesses, you've always focused on what resources do we need and who has them? Quick example was mm. setting out our company in the beginning. We had no office. You know, we were sharing <laughs> offices. You yeah. know, uh, we're lucky to have um, a lawyer at that time, God rest his soul, Efeo Zako, you know, who gave us a space you know, in his office in Sabo Yaba at that time. Yeah. You know, when we even moved the money to pay for an office space in Sule, and we got kicked out because we were subletting and then the, you know, the um, landlord came and they kicked the guy out, so he had to kick us out. Yeah. You know, we had to go back again to Efeo, who sis, whose sister then kind of took us into Takai. You know, and give us an office space. And when we started our company, you know, we had a lawyer that was, you know, lawyer to the top and high and mighty in Nigeria. You know, because we were looking for resources and mm. not money. You know, we had HR systems, a bit of accounting system mm. by sharing you with, know, with other, other people. people. So I think the first trick in opening a business as an entrepreneur is focus on what resources you have, you need. You know, and then find the people. Who can help you get those resources so basically i love what you're saying because a lot of people don't realize that when you're starting a business you want to start organically and it's more important to be resourceful with what you have as opposed to looking for actual you know cash and capital so find people that can give you 
you know, the things in like things or kind. Yes, and like, then you also have to be ready to give some kind of value, mm. you know, either either just by helping them out, you know, yeah. either by offering the kind of service you want to offer in the business to them for free, mm. you know, either by just being the nice little younger brother, mm. you know, you just have to be able to also find, find value to give back to, to them. So in terms of the problem that you were solving with Red Media, with all the content or media companies that you started, do you want to define that problem? What was the vision for the business? Um, I think in the beginning, we, we just we set out to solve a cultural tension. Mm -hmm. And many things that we have formed in our company in the 13 years of existence has always been to solve a cultural tension. And I always tell people when I do marketing classes that, you know, the best business you can have is one that solves a problem, yeah. especially a cultural problem. Because if a cultural problem, you have mass attention, mm -hmm. you know, and they can quickly become your customers, like Otuba Gaddafi, mm -hmm. who turned the shit business into <laughs> big business because it was a cultural tension. So you what know? particular so cultural time, tension? When we, when we set out to the future before the future was we'd be focused on re-engineering society that has always been my passion and my partners at that time so we said to go into the media because the media helps you reach mass we mm. always have our eye on mass but the best way to reach the mass is through the media which is why we say in our company that the media has limitless possibilities and we are here to use the media to that full potential and so we were doing you know columns in the papers we had a tv show on nta etctc <clears throat> and then one day you know, in 2005, at the peak of internet fraud in Nigeria, you know, internet had really come around 2000. And yeah. that five years had been, my name is this, I have this money, I want to transfer <laughs> to your account. Young people were at the embassies. The queues were offensive. You know, I know Wally Shinkai had come on TV at that time. We always you know, to, to mention this and said his generation was a wasted generation. Yeah. And he did not have any hope that our generation could save Nigeria. And, because we're and, all trying to escape to Italy. You know, <laughs> and so at that time, we thought to ourselves, there were many conferences, seven ways to be this, nine ways to be that, mm. impractical things. But we know, because we were pairs who were influencing other pairs. Mm. So we, we remember that actually, the strongest tool for you to get any young person to do anything was to get its pair to tell him or her, and they would listen. And so the pair-to-pair -peer education as one of the most viable way to mm. drive young people to action. How did you make your first one million naira? Like, how did you do it? And I'm, how did it feel? I'm not sure if I remember, but I know that, you know, for every, you know, victory we had. You don't remember, you know, do you I'm not sure if I do remember how many. Really? I'm, I'm telling you, I've always struggled <laughs> to answer that question. But I remember that my happiest would be at the end of the first, the future awards at City Mall, Magnolia Hall, February 6, 2006. Mm. That was the happiest, one of the happiest days of my life. You Why? know, we pulled together this event with little or no resource. Mm. Um, before that event ended at about 10 p.m., at 11 a.m. that day, 12 hours to the show, the hall was locked. We were owing 80,000 naira. Wow. You know, we had to go look for money. Now, the money came from a relationship, which is mm. why in my story, I always talk about human beings, about mm. people. There are two banks. There's a money bank, there's a people bank. Mm. I always encourage people to focus aggressively on building a people bank. Mm. You know, as you go older, you also find that if you build a money bank, you will also have people attracted to you, like the Dangotes. Mm. But I believe that, you know, the people bank is the most consistent of everything you can have and so we had a people bank that came through for us to get the hall open we opened the hall you know and the lady hadn't decorated the hall yeah. you know so myself and my partner picked up brooms <laughs> i said let's sweep and joined in the planning yeah. in in the organizing cut long story short by the time the event finished people were saying oh and this boy said we don't have money see the amazing event they put together and i've heard that all my life, all your life. because i have learned to do the to, to put in my best with the littleness of resources, but putting your best and aggressively ensure that by the time we produce the result, is it's, it's, it's grand value. enough and of great value. You know why I love this is because one of the biggest problems that entrepreneurs in Africa talk about is I have no access to capital. Mm. I have this brilliant idea. Yeah. I can't fund it. And mm. they don't understand the value of building a business organically mm -hmm. because you make your mistakes <clears throat> early so share with us a little bit about how because i know you've told me before about how you've had to be resourceful yes. as opposed to relying on raising actual cash i mean with the grace of god for example we've never had to take a loan from a bank in our mm. 13 years of being in business you know and by god's grace we've handled huge projects you know and um, 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 and so for us it's always been about organic growth yeah you know how do you manage what you have in the best possible, most effective form. 
And that is why when you build from the ground, those are lessons you learn. Mm. You know, which is why sometimes you look at many businesses that are folding up, you know, mm. today, you find out that big business with big cash injection, you know, this person hit this big funding from yeah. somewhere, that funding from somewhere. But the likes of Tara Fernando Toy, and are you an animal sound, you know, and Tajin and Adipeto who built from the ground up are still there and expanding organically. Some have taken loans from the bank, turned it mm -hmm. over, returned it, you know, but we have taken that model of growing organically. Mm. You know, and so that for me is key. When we were a smaller, you know, like an MSME before it became an SME, you know, we used to, uh, yes, we are SME. <laughs> we are an SME. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we, when we were at MSME, you know, we would focus on human beings. Mm. You know, we didn't have an office about the first four years of our business, for example. We're sharing an office with um, Takai and then with Efe Zako, our lawyer, God bless his soul, who was our lawyer for seven years. Relationship. We had So HR basically, he helps. provided his services for you. Pro bono. Relationship. Pro bono. So Pro basically, bono. what kind of... Because I find that with things like that, yes. people don't understand that. It's not that someone is just giving you help yes. for no reason. Yes. They'll, they'll be value so, so that, I'll tell you, a few that things. you provided. One, one, we were just the jolly good younger, you know, a bros, a bros yeah. you know. Then we also, I, I, I did it. My partner did some writing for him, mm -hmm. which he was impressed by. But you know, most of all, what he was impressed by, he was impressed by our grit, our passion for life, and the big things we were aiming to do. Mm. And he always saw that when we come here and we meet a roadblock, we'll go there, we'll go there, we'll go there. So resilience. He, he saw the resilience. Yeah. And so until this one said, we went to meet her, I went to the future. I said, listen. Mm. I don't have the money to give that for the future us, but I can see your eyes resilience. I can see that you're ready to do the work. Mm. So I'll go on this journey with you. And so sometimes many young people come to you asking you for help, but in their eyes, you don't even see that passion. You don't see the resilience. When they tell you- They don't you, even know what they need help They don't even know with. what they need help with. They're telling you, oh, what do you want me to do? Mm. And then, you know, when they even want to speak to you, they're not even asking you things clearly. Mm -hmm. And then they're not even able to tell you, this is what I have done. Mm -hmm. When I tell this one, listen to us in our office many years ago. She said, I see you guys at NTA. I see how you break your backs for that small show you produce at midnight. Mm -hmm. So I know there is something. I've got to say this something here quickly. I was talking to my brother who came to me with a technology idea yeah. two days ago, a blog. And I said to him, I said, listen, Linda Cage is a success at blogging, not because she became a success at blogging. When Linda Cage was a model in this country, she was one of the top models in this country. You might not remember. Mm. When Nikeji had a star night, a fashion show, it might not have been the top fashion show in this country, but it had a huge following. She had sponsorship for the star night. Mm. Nikeji ran an ushering and modeling company in this company in this country. So she, just, so she, she didn't successful. just start at being... You what know. is common in all of these things is that Linda is the common denominator. There's a spirit in the woman that mm. continues to fight until she succeeds. So many times, people can see if you have that spirit or not. And that spirit attracts them to yeah, want to help you. Definitely. Your light attracts your tribe. And people invest in people. They don't invest in businesses, really. So I think the resilience that you and Trinity have shown in everything that you've done and your attitude to excellence has definitely attracted people to say, do you know what? I want to be part of you know their story. I want to help them. OK, but another question I want to ask is, at what point did you start paying yourself a salary because I find that a lot of African businesses the biggest problem is separating the personal finances <clears throat> from their business yeah, finances. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. So so we've we built uh, from from that time a percentage model. Mm. Uh, we haven't in 13 years been able to pay ourselves a salary. Okay. Uh, what we've done is to um, basically you earn as you sell. Oh my god, I love that. Yes. So the business you bring in, you take, you a, take percentage a commission of it, of it you know, and, and, pay and everyone in the company gets commissions, you know, just at different levels. But everyone gets commissions for whatever business they bring to the company. Now the CEOs are will always remain marketers of the company. <laughs> You know, and so to drive that incentive, you know, which means that you must work your network, you must build a relationship, mm. you know, and, and show value to that network. Sometimes you have a relationship, but you haven't, you haven't shown any value beyond friendship. You yeah. haven't told the person your capacity, so they're not giving you work. Mm. So all the CEOs, you know, have to be alert to ensure that, you know, you're converting their friendships. I love this because it keeps, you, it keeps you accountable, whether yes. you're CEO or not. Yes. Like, it makes sure you're constantly, Absolutely. you know, developing your business Absolutely. and driving your um, profits. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. what's your biggest money mistake? Like, biggest money blunder. We've all made them. <clears> we all, you know, have to recover from them. I still make them. <laughs> of course. I haven't gone out Mistakes today. are the My best. My biggest money <laughs> blunder would be being poor at investment. Okay. Um, I say I'm lazy at investment. Um, um, 
and so I, 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 I that would be my biggest my blunder. Um, I want to be able to have a lot of passive income. Okay. I haven't been able to do as much as I would like to do with earning passive income. Um, um, and and so I'm, I'm working on that. Okay, you know, creating that, that those be, structures. Yes, creating those structures. You know. Because I find, it's, do you know, it's, it's difficult and it, it, it comes from like a money mindset because a lot of entrepreneurs fall into that trap where they feel like their business is their number one investment mm -hmm. and it's like, well, any yes. money I make, I'm putting it back yes. in my business. Yes, that, and, for and us, that's uh, almost, yeah, that's almost yeah. a cardinal rule. But you it's know, almost, we must continue to grow the business. You have to reinvest, but you also have to diversify. Because yes. what happens is you, we don't, we, we're so married to our mm -hmm, businesses mm -hmm. that we forget that they're two separate entities. So you are Debola Williams, Red Media is Red Media, Statecraft is Statecraft. And there's no point in those businesses being rich and you not being rich. So we have to start putting money in different like asset classes to build our own personal wealth alongside um our businesses but i find that a lot of even business leaders like i talk to different people who fall into that trap but it's great like to recognize it as a mistake and start doing things like to correct that so what's the one thing that you like to splurge on like your your guilty pleasure one thing you absolutely have to spend your money on that doesn't necessarily give you like a return but it gives you like great comfort it's boring do you want to hear it yes gifting people oh my god <laughs> it's boring but it's what it is do you know something i love that i love that so much because mm. it also speaks to your when it comes to networking adebola treats it like an art i remember should I say the story? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've gotten so many different gifts from Adebola for absolutely no reason. Things like sending yam and plantain and rice to my, to my, you know, to my house. And I'm like, Debola, I don't understand. It's not my birthday. What's happening? But you know what I realized? That gifting aspect of you, even if that's not why you do it, is so important to helping you build your network because I found that everybody that is in our circle that you do this stuff for, they feel indebted to you, not because of money, not because of the gifts, but you almost feel like someone gave me something that I didn't even ask for. So when Adebola calls you to say, I said, can you do X, Y, Z? You're ready. So networking, <laughs> if you've ever been in the room with this boy, right, at an event, he can she's go. my I've best seen, friend. She's allowed, seen... she's allowed to call me boy. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what? Yes, this boy. <laughs> um, do you know what? I've been in a room. Maybe we're having <laughs> breakfast at maybe Southern Sun or whatever. And then we've seen like a governor or a politician. And this was years ago. Like before it was like, it was big, huge. Big, big. And he goes up to the person who he has never met before yeah, to introduce himself. Hi, I'm so. Adebola Williams. I think I remember. <laughs> and he will say something like, oh, I listen to your speech on xyz or i saw what you did for the youth in this and it was very impressive this is my card and i i've learned so much from going to like different events with you you know one of my favorite things is when we walk into a room right that i as i observed that there's some guys or some people that their parents you know know a lot of influential people and when they go to an event like people are saying oh how are you how's your daddy how's your mommy but when they oh, I'm, goes I'm to, in uh, here. when they goes to an event they're saying oh adebola williams they mm. know you by the work yeah. that you've done yeah. and i think that that's really but it was also know, deliberate valuable. it was also deliberate as a little boy i would always sit with the older people mm. standard i always believe that listen let me go and find the path of my pairs. Let me mm. go and hear what is ahead of me. Yes. Let me go and see what's in the afternoon time, in the evening time, at my morning time. I come back and tell my pairs. And so when they were competing, I remember in my teenage church, I don't sit in the teenage church, I <laughs> sit in the main church. Yeah. Then it was time to represent the teenage church, they'll put me on stage. So it's a, it's a habit that you've cultivated. cultivated. And that network is so important in it helping is you get business, it is absolutely. in helping and you, you solve learn problems. It. It's a skill. Yeah. People say, oh, I don't network. I don't know how to. Mm. Oh, I'm not humble. I'm not this, I'm not that. Mm. My simple question to you is, when you were in school, did you learn biology? <laughs> did you learn economics? Did you know it before? Were you born with it? No, but you learned it. Mm -hmm. Because there are skills required to pass education. Fantastic. These are skills required to pass in life. You so, need... you know you know what I'm so interested in? So, you've built this amazing network that helps you to um, develop your business and, you know, make sales and all of that stuff. 
but at what point right did you start becoming truly profitable so was it like organic or was there like one financial event that just changed the game for you still organic mm. but in the course of the business we've had those moments of windfall but okay. mostly it's been so do you want to organic. share some of those windfalls in, like when with the, <laughs> like when? an example um i need to think of it um but so so it would be Things like you get a, you, you pitch an idea, mm. you know, so you, you have a TV show, you pitch an idea and then someone is buying the TV show, you know, someone is giving you a decent kind of sponsorship that helps you do the kind of event, you know, that you want to do that, you know, creates the platform you want to create. So those type of things. So, but the interesting thing about us is that even though it seems like a windfall, mm. because you then need to now step up your game with your productivity, you know, it still eats into that. Yeah. But again, for us, you know, that's an investment. Mm. Because if you do good work, business, more people business. will come to you. Yeah. So Fantastic. ultimately, you get to the point where you will just be there and the returns will be coming. coming. But we'll be on this years of investment. I love it. So what's the best investment decision you've ever made? Actually, you know, I was looking for to answer <laughs> that question, but I feel like I've also answered in a similar way. But okay. when you told me yesterday, I said thinking really, what would be my best investment? Mm. And I realized that I'm not sure I've actually made my best investment yet. Mm. I realized that I constantly and every day make my best investment, and that's in people. Okay. That's my best investment till date. The that's time not I the spend, answer I was looking for, yes, but, yes, but I'll but, take but, it. But, but I was, I was, you see, yeah. The, the model is so different, yeah. you know, but you have to understand the value of this mm. model and it's a model that people need to pay attention to. For all the time, you know, that I've been able to spend time with people genuinely because I want to. Gone out of my way, came off a flight, 12 hours, 16 hours to be there for people. Yeah. I have found that I have given to the universe. Everything you give to the universe, the universe gives, gives back, back to you. So I found consistently people also standing up to me. In place. Somebody made a call last week mm. to someone for me. I said, ah, do not kill this guy's business. You've got to do the thing he wants you to do. Uh, because the person was not going to kill my business. Yes. But she had to say that, you know, that in way. such a way. So that the person invested. She's invested. Yeah. And so you have those type of situations where people are, you know, just standing up for you and just being there for you. So it's my best. You know, the I love it. And, and gifting, things. building uh, your network, and just, investing yeah. in building organic relationships. That people don't spend time to know how to convert that mm. relationship into value. I'm always saying this thing, the auntie that you greet at conferences and everything, if you can't pick up the phone and say, please, can you help me remove this obstacle or can you help me create this opportunity that I'm thinking about? Then that person then is the not point? in your network. What's the yeah. point? And then you, know, just, you can you only ask. Mm. Even if she says no, it's fine. No, but I think the, the key thing here is building that relationship, relationship so that the other person is invested, invested in helping in you. you. Yes. Not like you're just a high hello bye yes. person. Yes. Um, okay, so to round up mm -hmm. my last two questions, what is your smart money mantra? Like the one, you know, philosophy that you have when it comes to your money. I save a percentage of my income okay. on building my network. On Fantastic. My network, That's know. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last question. Mm. If you had a hundred million naira, right, mm. and you could do and you could spend it and invest it, how would you spend it? How would you invest it? I'll come to you. <laughs> you know, but if I had to you know, real estate is always, you know, safe okay. safety. You know, it's real estate. Um you know, be sure that a good chunk of that is also going to gift it. Okay. <laughs> I like you know, to hear that. Yeah. So that. I'll get some of those gifts. <laughs> you know, but definitely our business will also sink in quite a, quite a, a bit of a that. Chunk so of between, that. you know, our business, you know, uh, based on real estate, uh, my friend who sells uh, land will say you must buy land every year. Even if it's 200,000 land. Really. So between real estate, the business, um, and of course, investing in my network, yeah. which is ultimately the network. Thank you so much, Adeba. Thank you for this having is, me. This is so amazing. Yeah, and it's great to watch and you live do your thing. Thank you know, you. slaying as usual. <laughs> well done. VAT, value added tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. 
Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. Welcome back, guys. So we had a very insightful discussion with Adebola Williams. And the highlights for me were, find a problem to solve that creates value that people will pay you for. Grow your network so that it has an impact on your revenues and your sales. And finally, be resourceful. You don't always need actual capital or cash to start a business. You can leverage on your relationships and exchange value. In Adebola's case, they had someone who was willing to offer them an office to work in for free for a period of time, but they were creating value that was not necessarily, you know, cash for that person. Thank you for watching The Bridge. See you next time. Thank you.